Hey everybody, it's Dr. Chang Ron here, and we're just so close to the Physician Practice Automation Summit, but I really connected with somebody, and I really want to share this person with you. This is Dr. Jimmy Turner, and he is the physician philosopher. So if you ever want to know what that is, just go to thephysicianphilosopher.com and check him out. But um, the reason why I think this is such an important thing is because we have very similar experiences and taste a lot of the pain points. So Jimmy, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, Chang. I'm super excited to, to chat about this. I think it's gonna be really helpful for people. Yeah, so you know, before we got on camera and press record, I think what we mostly connected over is a fundamental fact that we see a lot of doctors that if they're burnt out and they want to change so many things around them, whether it's relationships, whether it's business, um, business models, and then they start experiencing what I like to call burnout stacking, where they burn out on one thing and then they go to another thing, they just burn out there. And, you know, I, I don't think it's very useful to change an external environment to affect the internal environment if the internal environment is not necessarily ready to, to receive that change. How do you feel about that? Yeah, no, I think, I think you're spot on. And in, in, in the coaching world, we, we, call that the idea of like changing your circumstances. Right. And I've never actually heard the, the term, uh, burnout stacking. I like that. I might have to steal that from you at some point, but it's, uh, yeah, I mean, that's exactly what happens. Right. So, you know, they're not happy in, in one environment. And so they go try to find it somewhere else. Um, you know, we talk a lot about, um, you know, the motivational triad. So people are trying to avoid pain or seek pleasure and do either of those things as efficiently as possible. And so people will change their circumstances to avoid the pain of the burnout they're currently in or to seek the pleasure, potential pleasure of a future job. And then they get there and they find out that they didn't do the internal work they needed to do. And so they end up being just as burned out in a new situation. And, and it's confusing for people because they're trying to fix it, right? Absolutely. And I think we naturally, as physicians, we're, we're, we're taught in a very structured way. It's like a very hierarchical format, right? So we had school, we had more school, we have even more school, and then we have residency, we have fellowship, we have attending ship, right? And so in this sort of structure of format, we existed within an environment of a hierarchical shift. So when we're interns, we look up to the residents, when we're residents, we look up to the chief residents, when chief residents look up to the attendings and, and whatnot. And then ultimately, um, that type of progression, I think, takes away a lot of the innovation. So by the time the, the, the practitioner, the physician wants to have an innovative mindset, we don't necessarily have the engine or the capacity to turn that innovation into execution, you know? Yeah, uh, well, I mean, it's, it's an inherent problem when you have all that structure the entire way and then you get done and all of a sudden there's no structure and like it's carte blanche the, you know, the world is your oyster. You can do whatever you want with it. And people are like, wait, but I don't understand. Like, what's the next step? I've always just been told what the next step is the entire, the entire journey. And so, you know, when people don't have that, that next step anymore, they feel like, oh, I have, I have to make a change. There's gotta be something else after this, you know, and, and that leads to kind of the arrival fallacy that people have and, and why they search for those new opportunities. Absolutely. And that's why I really appreciate what you do, because from a coaching standpoint, you know, I myself have to buy into a lot of coaching programs. And um, there's very unique situations about physicians that I think other physicians truly only understand. Yeah. And I think it's very similar because when I talk about my staff, so I hire uh, military veterans. And when I talk about with my veteran staff and our veterans program, it's similar, like only veterans understand the things about military veterans understand. And the same thing with some of the other diagnostic groups, but from a physician standpoint, there's something that, that are really truly unique in terms of the psychology of a, of a physician. And I think those unique struggles require shining light by, by other physicians, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think that that's not only important for the individual solution, but it's important for people just to have that, that process normalized, that they're not the only doctor out there struggling with burnout or imposter syndrome, or, you know, wanting to make a change or make things better, or, you know, fix the system. Um, you know, cause a lot of us, you know, feel alone. I mean, that's why a lot of people end up coming, yeah. coming to both of us are like, you know, Hey, I'm looking for this solution. I'm looking for this way of fixing things. Cause like, I just don't feel like, you know, there there's anyone out there fighting this fight. And so once people realize that they're not alone in that, it's, I think, you know, really, really helpful, um, allows you to have a little more self-compassion because you know that you're not the only one fighting that fight. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why I'm so glad to, to have this physician practice automation summit is that we actually tackle a lot of those pain points from doctors that are very much retired uh, into the retirement years. And then also doctors who are brand new startups. 
and then also from other professionals who are looking through their own lenses of what the doctors are going through, whether it's a lawyer or NBA or a coaching consultant within uh, medical practices or it's large institutions like Cleveland Clinic and Mayo Clinic and Harvard, they're all represented on, on the summit. And the, 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 there's, a, there's a very daunting uh, lesson I think that's learned from the summit is that because of the, of the global pandemic, we're forced to pivot and that mechanism to pivot is not necessarily taught um, within physicians. And that's the issue with physician leadership, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, the, I think that the struggle that I see, you know, for a lot of people when they want, they consider making that, that pivot, that change is that they're constantly worried about getting it wrong. They're constantly worried about failing because that's not something that physicians do particularly well. Right. And so they're like, wait, like, I'm not, I'm not, super happy in my situation right now. And I know that this other situation could be better for me, but what if I get it wrong? And, and just that thought process and, and dealing with failure and viewing failure as like the end all be all thing that you just can't ever experience. Um, I mean, that, that's what prevents a lot of physicians from becoming entrepreneurs or starting their own business or, you know, changing to a concierge practice or to, you know, uh, you know, you know, uh, their own private practice, independent structure is because they, they, they were worried like, oh, well, what if it, what if it doesn't work out? Everything's always worked out, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And that's from the hierarchical handholding structure that we doctors yep. have been thin within the, uh, the medical education, well, not just medical education, the educational system in general, and then the training system, because we're kind of beat on our heads, like stick within the guidelines, otherwise you might get sued sort of thing, right? Yep. So that might work as in the practice of medicine, but when it comes to leadership, when it comes to growth and self-contribution and the feeling of significance, it's very different dynamic there. And I think that's why, you know, physician burnout so at, all, at an all-time high. So, you know, go ahead. There's a link that's with this video. It's probably below here. <laughs> Click on that link. It's a free online summit for streaming. It's 44 CMEs. And these are what's called self-reflective CMEs. Um, so self-reflective CMEs are basically that if you look at an educational piece and you reflect that back internally, just like what we kind of did today uh, on our really short segment here, and if you feel that provides you value, well, guess what? The AMA still wants you to develop yourself. So it's called a self-reflective CME through a company called AdaptTrack. And so 44 CME, they're AMA PRA category one, which means they're the right ones to have for physician licensure. Go ahead and click on that link. And we have so much value to present on the online summit. And Jimmy, I just want to thank you for being on and having this short mini segment with me. And I truly appreciate the th- all the things that you do. Yeah, absolutely, Chang. I'm excited for the summit and for, uh, for my, my audience checking it out. I can't wait to hear the, uh, the good news about everything that people learned. Absolutely. Once again, click on the link that's below this video uh, to register for the online summit. There's no risk. You don't pay anything. Um, you just you just go in and do it. And for those of you who do want to do learn at your own time, especially those of you who want CMEs, there's a small fee uh, to get all the recordings so you can learn on demand for the entire next year that qualifies for your CME. So thank you very much. Thanks, Chang.